The Barn by Two Away. Nays, moos, oinks, and clucks filled the air. A festive time of day, the ever jovial evening in the barn. Farmer Sanders walked in, fed the animals, and paused. Why on earth did I ever keep them separate? This ain't just more convenient, it's downright parter for them critters, he thought to himself as he filled the pig trough with slop. Having finished the last of his daily routines, Farmer Sanders returned to his home for a night of drinking cheap whiskey, eating mediocre food, and just maybe clapping his lippy wife if she decided to go on about wanting to leave again. Late that night, as the whiskey's glow faded, Sanders woke up to a peculiar sound, almost as if the animals were fighting. Certainly a different tone that was conveyed earlier in the evening. Sanders went to investigate at his wife's behest, but found the barn silent. In fact, the moment he set foot outside of his home, all sounds of nature appeared to cease. Eerie as it felt, he was eager to shake off the malaise of consciousness and get some rest. The next morning, Farmer Sanders returned to the barn. He didn't remember much about last night, but he knew he was out of whiskey. The barn was silent, a mere shadow of the cacophony from the night before. He ate the horses, fed the chickens, and slopped the pigs. Just before going back outside to let the cows out from the rear pen door, he marveled at the craftsmanship of his new barn. It seemed to him as if every little detail was meticulously thought out by them house orchestration people. Shady as they were, they fixed up the barn in half the time and for half the price it would have cost him to do it all himself. As he turned his gaze back to the door, something peculiar caught his eyes. The horses ate, the chickens pecked, but the pigs... The pigs seemed otherwise occupied. Upon further inspection of the pigs' pen, he noticed something off-putting. Now, Farmer Sanders wasn't the kind of man who thought too much, not a man who felt much either. Too salty for the salt of the earth, too abrasive to be rough around the edges. Very simply, very simple. But in that moment, he looked into that pen. Farmer Sanders felt deeply disturbed. The pigs were all gathered around the mutilated body of one of their brood. A piglet lay still, breathing shallow, labored breaths in silence. Despite being provided with ample food every day, it appears as though they had rather hastily resorted to cannibalism. Suppose I ought to give him more slop, he thought to himself, as he used the large mucking broom to clear the way to the disfigured porcine babe. Further exacerbating his discomfort at the sight, he noticed that the pigs weren't interested in the slop at all. In fact, it was as if they had no choice but to eat the little piglet. Farmer Sanders bent down to hoist the piglet, only to find it felt heavy. Far too heavy for a baby that size. Upon realizing what they seemed to perceive as their only food source was being removed, the pigs began to huff, then squeal. Then they got rowdy. What entire nation you get yourself into, Jim? Mrs. Sanders hollered, torn between laughing at the sight of her shit cake husband and exploding in rage over the shit cake doorway. God damn it, woman, get some soap and hose me down out back, would you? As Farmer Sanders turned back outside, he heard his wife lose the battle against her composure and burst into laughter. I'll have to give her something to laugh about, he thought as he trembled so violently with rage that the thick coat of pig feces almost shook right off of him. Now, Farm Sanders didn't have many friends. In fact, just one. The town drunkard, Bill. He used to run a sawmill until a fatal accident called his negligence and alcohol consumption into question. His eldest boy was split right in half, they say. They also say that Fat William Johnson was never the same after it happened. No one could know for sure, though, as it was more than likely any time they talked to him, they weren't doing more than talking to the bottom of a bottle of cheap whiskey. Hey, mine! mellowed Bill between hiccups. 
What happened to your face, woman? Oh, hey, Bill. It ain't nothing. I fell, Maud said, turning her bruised face away from the visitor. You certainly fell a lot, eh? Maybe Jim should get you a walker. You're an ass, Bill. A real ass. Mrs. Sanders huffed as she stormed off, wiping the budding tears from her black eye. As quickly as Mrs. Sanders stormed off, the door of the quaint little farmhouse burst open to reveal Farmer Sanders, filled with fervor. After briefly pausing to double-check that he hadn't thrown the door right off its hinges, he began to yell to his portly chum, "'About damn time you got here! I need you to hold back them pigs for me!' Whoa, what? The pigs? Why?' The rotund man dabbed his sweaty forehead as he began to flush in the hot summer sun. "'Come on, you'll see!' Moments later, they were strategically planning their way to remove the piglet's carcass. As Fat Will hopped into the pen, the pigs all ceased their interest in the now still mangled piglet. Uh, Jim, they normally like this, Will asked as he scanned the field of vacant stairs that fixated on his plump thighs. Farmer Sanders ignored his friend as he deftly attempted to pry the baby pig's twitching body with a shovel. With one quick thrust, he shoved the shovel underneath, hitting something hard and firm, like a root. As he continued to jab at the root that held the piglet in place, a horrendous wail erupted from all of the animals simultaneously. Distorted and grating neighs, moos, oinks, and clucks plagued the air like the screech of nails on a chalkboard. Desperate to evade the sound, Farmer Sanders hopped out of the pen, clapped his hands around his ears, and ran out of the barn. Jesus H. Christ! I ain't never heard a sound like that out of any animal! Hey, Bill! Farmer Sanders exclaimed as he turned around to see that the barn door was firmly shut behind him. His friend nowhere to be seen. Bill? The sound had ceased a few moments later, and Farmer Sanders slowly walked towards the barn. An uneasiness began to wash over him as a pit formed in his stomach. Bill! He yelled again while gripping the barn door's handle firmly and tugging. No response from Bill. No budge from the door. Being the bright individual that he was, Farmer Sanders just kept yanking to no avail. That is, until a peculiar sound interrupted his vain attempts. He pressed his ear to the door and listened hard for any sign of his friend. All he could hear was a squishy slopping and crunching. An old, rarely lit tungsten filament bulb illuminated in Sanders' thick noggin. He decided to go around back and enter through the pasture doors that lay adjacent to the cow pen. As the double doors swung ajar with mild resistance, Sanders was met with blank eyes. Every one of his cows were facing him, leering. No cud being chewed. No tails wagged. Hell, it didn't appear as though they were even breathing. Stone still, the bovine wall ahead of him just glared through milky white eyes. All right, girls, just clear the way, you hear? Farmer Sanders announced as he tried to gently wiggle his way through the beefy stockade. Something was off. Vague memories of his barely conscious investigation into the barn's midnight cacophony came slivering back. There was a sickly smell to the air. Not one you'd expect in a barn. Almost acidic. Acrid, even. Bill! The hapless farmer cried out once more. The upper door and all the shutters were closed. Surely Bill didn't do that. Sanders knew they were open when he stormed out earlier, as now he could hardly see a damn thing. Through the narrow rays of light that penetrated the slits in the windows and door frames, he found his friend. Face down in the trough of an uneaten slop was the half-eaten body of fat William Johnson, crowded by gluttonous pigs. No, Bill Christ! He yelled as he ran over, grabbing one of his friend's arms in a desperate attempt to hoist him out of the pen. The fat William's body was just too heavy, even after losing damn near half its mass. The pigs began fighting for their meal. 
However hard the farmer tugged, the pigs were winning this fleshy tug of war. As he backed up from the pen, entranced by the grisly scene, the farmer noticed something equally disturbing. There appeared to be a hole in the mud where the piglet had previously laid, and out from the piglet's backside was a long, pink, hose-like thing. It had been severed where he had hacked at it with a shovel, and a thick black ooze leaked forth. That must have been the source of the rank smell. As he stumbled back, the shutters began to squeak open. The light of day eagerly filled the room. The sounds of crunching and chewing ceased as the pigs turned their gaze to Farmer Sanders. It wasn't just the pigs. The cows, the chickens, the horses too, all had that mindless stare through milky white eyes. As he desperately pushed and kicked at the barn doors, they just wouldn't budge. He desperately ran into the cow's enclosure and pushed past the beasts, terrified. In the chaos, the cows began to stomp and cry out. Finally, he made it through and began to run from the barn. But not before one malicious, meaty mammal gave chase. Thundering hooves caused the fearful farmer to haul more ass than ever before in his life. Having reached his property line before hopping the fence, he was sorely out of breath. Had the stampeding hooves behind him not abruptly ceased, the beast would have surely caught him. Instead, it just stood still, with that blank stare. He couldn't see its eyes, but he knew they had that haunting milkiness. The cow began a blood-curdling call. The call could be heard in the distance from the barn, wailing back. Suddenly, the cow dropped with a thud. Dead. Are you kidding me? Some kind of man you are. I ain't the farmer here. I do enough taking care of you. I ain't feeding the damn pigs for you too. Mrs. Saunders yelled. No, nope, Maud, you don't get it. You don't see what I saw. The way those pigs, all those animals looked at us. Farmer Saunders began to plead. So you're scared of some pigs now? And you want me to handle them? Some kind of man indeed. Before she finished scolding her husband, his whiskey glass whizzed right by her head, smashing against the wall. Mrs. Sanders froze up as her husband walked over to the liquor cabinet to check for the whiskey he knew wouldn't be there. As he rifled through the shelves, he started one of his half assed apologies. Listen, Maud, he began as he turned around to find that his wife was gone, the front door ajar. Farmer Sanders hurried through the open door, conflicted on whether to lavish her with kisses or kiss her with his belt. Strangely, she was nowhere to be seen. Now, were Farmer Sanders half as smart as Mart, he'd have simply looked behind the door. Thankfully for her, he wasn't. He trampled back into the house, cursing and yelling. His temper tantrum proved an adequate cover for the sound of Maud walking down the front steps, getting into the pickup, and starting the engine. By the time Sanders got wise to the ruse, the truck was merely a dot on the horizon. A strange mixture of feelings washed over the abandoned farmer. First, anger. Damn Maud for leaving. Damn Bill for being pig food. Damn himself for causing all this to happen. That's when the loneliness sat in. He had been pretty isolated out on his farm, but it was never really alone. He had Maud. When she wasn't enough, he called Bill. Worst comes to worse. He always had his animals. Right. The animals. That's when the fear set in. First things first, he had to figure out what the hell was going on around here. Things all seemed to have changed once that damn house committee people fixed up his barn. Maud said they gave her the willies, but Sanders paid no mind. What the hell they call themselves? He muttered to himself as he collapsed defeatedly onto his good chair. The home handling committee? The house orchestra? Damn it, was something stupid. The farmer racked his brain most of the night until it finally dawned on him to hunt down the business card. Hello and thank you for reaching out to the home orchestration accreditors. We're currently experiencing a high volume of excited and enthusiastic callers. 
So long as your dedication rivals theirs, we'll be with you shortly. The automated voicemail machine answered tauntingly. What use was a damn phone when no one would pick up? Sanders no sooner had slammed the phone than the phone's bell began to hammer. Jesus Christ! Farmer Sanders exclaimed, damn near dropping his bottle of whiskey that he'd been trying to nurse the last few drops from. Frustrated, he picked up the phone. What? Sanders asked into the receiver, but he didn't hang up. He was too fixated on the tumbler across the room that was slowly filling with whiskey. A single cube of ice bobbed in the glass. Only one man Jim Sanders knew took his whiskey with a single cube. William Johnson. The raspy voice over the phone continued trying to speak, as Sanders doubted his sanity. He thought to himself, causing gears not used since grade school to turn in his head. Bill? Sanders croaked into the receiver. The static ceased abruptly before the voice on the other end spoke clearly. Jim, the radio. Bill's voice spoke as the static returned so loudly that Saunders dropped the phone. Shit, Bill! The farmer exclaimed, picking the phone back up, but there was only the loud hissing of white noise. Saunders turned his gaze to the radio and walked over to it. He picked up the iced whiskey tumbler beside it and took a sip. Shit, I'm losing my marbles. He said as he turned it on and spun the dial. All stations were static. Until... A crooning voice with haunting percussion began wailing through the speaker. Don't go into that barn, yeah? Tom Waits howled. The horrible screeching wail began to roar out once more from the barn. Farmer Sanders shut off the radio and dragged a chair in front of his door. The sun had set and the sky was a pitch-black sheet of cellophane. Farmer Sanders paced in his kitchen before picking up the phone. He had to call someone, maybe the sheriff. Unfortunately, a deafening silence was all that could be heard from the receiver. Silently, the radio came to life once more. I said, don't go into that barn, yeah? From the window, Saunders could barely make out the barn doors gently swinging open. The screeches continued as the beasts began to exit the barn. It was too dark to tell for sure, but they didn't look like any animals he'd raised. A rumbling came from beneath his feet. The foundations of the farmhouse shook. It felt as though there was an earthquake. The work floorboards of the kitchen began to split as tiny worm-like tendrils of pink forced their way up. Farmer Sanders began to panic. Whatever was in the earth under the farm was awakening. It was growing. He ran to the kitchen window, only to be met with the milky white gaze of a horse. It bared its teeth at him, revealing deep signs of decay as small pink worms wriggled from its gums. The shrieking filled the night sky. As he desperately sought a way out, every window held the twisted visage of what was once a simple barnyard beast. A shattering window caused the farmer to yelp as a scaly chicken flew into his living room. In futility, the farmer fled through the back door. He raced for the storm cellar. The concrete foundations would surely prove a sanctuary until morning. Or so he thought. The thick walls of cinder blocks only partially defeated the twisted and distorted barnyard cacophony. Then suddenly, silence. For the first time since his youth, the farmer fell to his knees and prayed. The silence lured him into a false sense of security. As the farmer pleaded to any god that would listen, an old forgotten one answered. The concrete beneath his knees split as the tip of a tendril reached into his pant leg. The sun crested the surrounding hills as a familiar pickup truck appeared on the horizon. Maud, along with her father, pulled up out front of the house. Jesus, Maud, I never knew it got so bad, her father said, peeking through a shattered window. Really went nuts this time, she said sullenly. Maud! A voice came from the barn as the door slowly creaked open. Jim, you got some explaining to do, 
Maud's father yelled as he entered the barn. Maud slowly crept over to the darkening building. Jim? You in here? No answer. Pa, what's going on? She called out, stepping up to the threshold. A static hiss from the farmhouse stopped her, and she spied a humanoid figure in the darkness. Don't go into them barn, yeah!